So where are we headed with this? First of all, uh, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this age. The patterns of this age determine or say to us, they dictate to us, that uh, my mortal body is just clay. It can't have anything to do with the spiritual realm. Uh, it's it's just going to die and go back to dust. My soul... Uh, it's a, it's got a problem, and uh, you know, so my, the patterns of this age uh, dictate a lot of things to us. But the verse goes on to say, "But be transfigured by getting a new mind, get a new mind." So what's the inference? Inference. Inference is my mind actually can throttle or shut down or limit the ability of the life of God to flow through me. To me and through me. Now, if I believe that Christ, the hope of glory, lives in me, then my limiting factor with my mind would be I restrain Jesus down inside of me. I put him in a little box and I don't let him out. (laughs) But what we're doing today and what we're doing on this whole ascended life journey is we're learning to come into the reality of of the spirit realm, of the heavenly realm. Ephesians 1, 3, He's blessed you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. So where do we get spiritual blessings? As we learn to live in the heavenly places. And so what we're learning, what we're exploring, what we're pushing every time, we're like going to the gym and doing a workout. Let me do 10 reps of this and 30 of this and whatever. So what we're doing is Exploring the capacity, the ability to strengthen our soul to believe what is already true in our spirit. Now, let me. Here's a thought that came to mind. Early on, Jesus, for his first thirty years, we don't know much about him, other than the manger and Jerusalem at twelve years old. But somewhere along the line, I'm confident he had learned to ascend. He had learned. That's what John three says. No, is it, no one has ascended except for he who descended. John 3.13 So he had learned to ascend during those 30 years. He was learning how to not only identify, but authorize his spirit to take leadership. Now listen to this. This might be just a little stretch, but it's compatible, I believe, with uh, Romans 12.2. I believe he descended so much that he had trained his soul and his body to learn how to live in the spiritual realm, the heavenly realm also. And do we have a do we have a uh, example of that? Well, I think of course Mount of Transfiguration will be an example of the spirit life manifesting through him, but let me give you two or three where his soul and his body we're not a limiting factor to a spirit. Paul, you said well that our spirit is in heaven. We all agree with that. We're good with that. But can our soul and our spirit live in the heavenly spiritual realm? So Jesus has an occasion where they get really mad at him. People do. And they're going to stone him. You have just blasphemed. And we're going to stone you right now. And Jesus... Because he was used to living in the heavenly realm, because he had already learned how to ascend. We learned that in John 3. And I believe he'd already learned how to train his soul and his body to come into oneness with his spirit, namely in the heavenly realm. When it came time, his soul and his body went poof. Just like his spirit is unseen and your spirit's unseen right now, His body and soul joined him, and he disappeared in the crowd and escaped the stoning. Another occasion when they're going to throw him over a cliff because, again, of blasphemy. Guess what? Now, you know these people weren't so absent-minded and distracted that they let their main subject get away from them. There is no way. (laughs) They got this guy front and center. They got him up to the edge of the cliff. And Jesus is like, well, I have learned how to ascend and I've been taking my soul and my body 
this is kind of, this is stuff that I'm pretty familiar with now. I think it's one of those times. I don't want to show myself as God yet. Remember, I think as Romans says, if the powers of this world, rulers of this world had known who he was, they would not have crucified him. And Jesus knows he can't show much of his godness. He's got to put a limit on that or else they wouldn't crucify him. But he also knows it's not time to die being thrown over a cliff. So he says, I'll do a little limit. They're going to scratch their heads and like, what happened here? But at least they won't call me God yet. Because if they do, they won't crucify me. Are you in Jesus' head here? And Jesus says, okay, soul and body, we've done this before. It's time. It's time. Poof, he disappears. Now that's pre-cross. That's pre-resurrection. That's pre-ascension. That's preceded, preceded at the right end of the Father. And we have some times after that when he showed up in another form to the two on the way to Emmaus. Now that just makes you scratch your head too. <laughs> Jesus' body now is not limited to the way you were born. Oh my, what are we going to do with that one? <laughs> Jesus has learned to make his soul and his body subject to his spirit. Come on! That's, <laughs> oh, that is just mind-boggling but enticing at the same time. It's like, oh my goodness! There's so much more to this than we ever thought. We have a nice, tidy, little churchified religion that we kind of spout off some cliche verses. And well, that's probably the extent of Christianity until we die and get a glorified body. Jesus is manifested to us in how many occasions? Guys, you can make your soul and your body subject to your spirit. And your soul and your body do not have to be limited to the temporal realm only. Oh my gosh, we're going to talk ourselves into faith. <laughs>